Hi, I'm Sophia Michaelis. And I'm Alex Kahn. And today we're gonna to work with you to build your lantern for morning side lights. Morning Side Lights is a procession of lanterns collaboratively built by you and many others that brings light and life to a theme or an idea. And this year is our 10th year doing Morning Side Lights and we are so grateful to all of you who in the past decade have come together and helped us build this event, have joined us along the way and also those of you who joined us last year to show us that even when we couldn't be together in person, we could still create this wonderful community and artistic event. So in celebration of our 10th year, we're so grateful that you could join us. This year's theme is Play On, taken from the Shakespeare quote, if music be the food of love, play on, from Twelfth Night inspired by Columbia's campus-wide exploration this year of the intersection of the work of Duke Ellington and William Shakespeare, specifically focusing on Ellington's work, Such Sweet Thunder, which was a suite of 12 pieces all drawn from works of Shakespeare. He didn't just set words to music. He didn't just say, okay, we're gonna take Macbeth, make a song, take Hamlet, make a song. He took the works of Shakespeare collectively and it's almost like he tore them into fragments and he collaged them back together, finding new resonances and historical confluences among the work as a whole. Ellington was going through a lot of personal, professional, and creative challenges. And in order to move forward, he really looked back to the literary canon to play on amidst all of his, his challenges. And so we're inviting you all to do the same thing. It's been a hard year for all of us, and we've all gone through various challenges. So this is our chance to delve back into the literary canon and to find some inspiration there, find a passage or quote that means something to you from the works of William Shakespeare. Then we're gonna ask you to embed that quote, to illuminate it in a giant lantern in a way that makes it contemporary and personal to you. So for example, the lantern that we are going to be building today is uh, inspired from a quote from Henry IV, part two. We have heard the chimes at midnight. And we were thinking, how does that translate to everyday life in the city, to, to our own experience? And I grew up hearing the chimes of the ice cream truck kind of coming through the neighborhood. The quote in Shakespeare has a, a good deal of portent and foreshadowing in it. It's sort of a heavy thing. And then to sort of have that comical counterpoint of like, here are the chimes at midnight, it's the ice cream truck coming through. And of course, for a lot of New Yorkers who live with ice cream trucks on their block, there's also this kind of oppressive, like, there it is again. <laughs> you know, so anyway, we thought this was really funny. And of course, it's a quote from Falstaff, who is the, the epitome of a hedonistic, life-loving, indulgent kind of character. So what better place for his quote to appear than on an ice cream truck? So that's the lantern that, as our example, we're gonna be building in the course of this video. And yours, of course, will be personal to you. And then we're also going to ask you to record your quote. You can have anybody in your household, kids, adults, whoever you want, but we want you to make a small recording of that quote because that is going to become layered into the soundtrack of the final video. That's really gonna be the verbal glue that holds the whole piece together. And while you're working on all of this, we really want to see what you're working on, what your process is. We love getting videos uh, and any kind of documentation from you about how you're going about approaching this unique and interesting creative problem. And then when you bring your lantern out on September 25th, we really want to see uh, video of you moving through your respective neighborhoods. Wherever you may be coming out on that night, we would love to see footage of you out there on that night celebrating Morningside Lights, celebrating Ellington and Shakespeare. And all of that video is going to be woven together in the final film. In a sense, it's going to be a virtual procession brought together through the magic of video. So just to sum up, Choose a quote 
embed it in a lantern, record your voice or the voices of your family speaking your quote, and then share video of both your process and of your final result when you come out on September 25th. So this is what you have in your lantern making kit. You have two sheets of coroplast, and this will make the sort of walls of the lantern, coroplast spacers, and this will create, you know, separate the two sheets of coroplast, attach those with the packing tape, cut out your shape with an X-Acto knife, cover the lantern with cheesecloth, a good long strip of it, glue the cheesecloth on with your Elmer's glue and use a brush. Mix up some paper mache, so we have this art paste, and you will cover the lantern with white tissue paper. Nearing the final stages, you have a whole array of colors to choose from. You will write your quote in black Sharpie. And finally, you will rig the lantern, hang it on bamboo stick, and illuminate your lantern with this light. Additionally, there are some things that you might have already that are gonna be very useful. We recommend a soft pencil. 2B, 3B, 4B is great. It'll just be helpful to use that to draw onto the coroplast. An eraser, very useful. A whisk to mix up the paper mache. Scissors are helpful when you get into cutting details of the tissue paper. A smallish brush, and that will show those techniques for working in detail when you get to color for the tissue paper. A straight edge can be quite useful depending on what your design is. And you will also need a bucket to mix the paper mache in. You want to be able to really whisk it and mix it up well. So a biggish bucket is helpful. When you draw out and then cut your lantern, you will want to protect your surfaces. So we have some this thick cardboard, but even just corrugated cardboard boxes, you will want to protect your tabletop, countertop, whatever you are cutting into. The first thing that you want to do is to really start thinking about your design, your drawing. You will start by choosing a quote. If you have any Shakespeare in the house, you can do that. There also, there's a wonderful website by the Royal Shakespeare Company that has a lot of really wonderful quotes by Shakespeare. You can look at that. Look for quotes that really speak to you that you can imagine somehow resonate with your life, your experience. It might take some time to really think about what you want to do because you're really, you're looking at a quote and you're looking for an image based on your experience. So when you choose your quote, look for an excerpt or shorter version of a quote, maybe somewhere around 50 characters, just because you will have to embed it in your lantern and write it large so it's visible. Now you can put your quote wherever you want. It can be part of the image, it might be below it, above it. You can figure that out, but just make sure it's on the surface, not on the edging of the lantern so that we can all read them and especially at the end when all of the lanterns come together in the film that we can we can see all the different quotes. You will want the lantern to be as big as you possibly can on this sheet of coroplast. If you have a, a square or rectangular outline, that might not be so interesting a silhouette. But on the other hand, you don't want to make something that is so complicated that you have a really hard time cutting it out and then paper macheing, cheesecloth-ing the edges. So this outline has some details, but it's not uh, super complex. Another thing to think about is that your lantern will be illuminated against the night sky. So allow yourself to think of imagery that has a lot of light. You don't have to create the night sky. Your lantern will be out in the night sky. So for example, we did the ice cream truck. We didn't create the scene of an ice cream truck in the street at night. We don't need that. It, the, the lantern will be in the street at night. Think of ways to simplify your design that is visible and recognizable. Now that we have sketched out our drawing, I'm gonna take one sheet of coroplast, drawing this out without much internal detail, but really looking to get the outline that I want. Now I have the ice cream truck all drawn out. 
at least the outline of it. The next step is to cut out the outline uh, in that first sheet of chloroplast. Pull out the blade a little bit. You can lock it. Of course, we want to be careful because we're using blades. You certainly will want to have protected whatever surface you're cutting into, tabletop, floor, countertop. Be very careful about where your hands are. Like whenever I cut, I just want to make sure if I'm holding the chloroplast, I'm not going to be cutting towards my hand. So I like to start with a nice straight line that's helpful. And I kind of dig in a little bit at the corner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to First, I'm going to just draw with my knife. In other words, I'm going to cut through that first layer of plastic, not try to saw my way all the way in. And you can do that all the way around, or you can sort of do section by section. If my line changes direction, I might stop and then kind of make sure I, I start with my point so that those, uh, those angles are cut all the way through. It is a little bit easier in a way to cut across perpendicular to the flutes or all the way following in the flutes, meaning the lines of the choroplast, but it'll, it'll just feel different. But just make sure you don't get kind of tracked into one if you don't want to go that way. Once I have cut across a, a section, I can go back in and I now have um, that first cut, which is like a channel for my knife. And so I can apply a little bit more pressure, but I'm also going slowly because I'm making sure the blade stays within that channel and it's pretty smooth. So you can see my blade went through. Keep your scraps because they will be useful later on. So now I have one of my sheets cut out and the next step is to trace the outline onto the second sheet and cut that out. Now we have both sheets cut in exactly the same shape. So the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how our lantern is going to be oriented. Now the pole is going to go all the way through the lantern. So we want to make sure we have a space set for it to pass through. And we'll make a little mark with our pencil for the space that the pole is going to pass through. You have in your kit 12 little supports. We're not going to put these supports all the way around. We're just going to put them in a few spots where they're needed to give it a nice structure. When you pull these out, some of them may be a little stuck together. So you got to kind of peel them apart and then we'll add more as we go around. A couple of pieces of tape, four inch piece or so, three or four inches. And I'm going to move my top layer away for the moment. I've made those marks. Just putting it underneath the lantern sticking out with the sticky side facing up. I'm going to take my spacer and I'm going to place it on top of the lantern. Not on the side coming in like that, but right on top. And then I'm going to pull up with the tape firmly and tape that in place. I can just flop it down. So I'm going to leave myself just enough for that little pole to go through. You don't want this to be wiggly at this point. You want it to be a nice firm fit. Let that flop down. I might say, oh, here's a, here's a corner that's that's where the speaker on the ice cream truck is. That's sticking out. I might put one there. Maybe right on this edge here. One of the things to remember in building lanterns and indeed in building any number of things is that things may be a little floppy at the beginning, but many weak things working together eventually will make a strong thing. So now I have placed the spacers strategically around the outside. So if we just sort of try to tape this on, it's going to be pretty wobbly and maybe a little inaccurate. We're going to call on our Arden Shakespeare and a few other books. Put a nice big stack of books in the middle there. And these books are exactly the same height as our spacer. So that makes a nice tabletop for us to then take our second piece and lay it on top. So we'll take another book and sort of line that up and just kind of work our way around to make sure we've got the whole thing square. So just make some micro adjustments. Let's take another little strip of tape. We're going to slip it underneath our spacer and we're going to draw this up towards our lantern, pop it inside, sandwiched in between the two pieces, pull tight and smooth it down. Don't forget you've got books in here and you're eventually going to have to get them out again. So before you do the last two, make sure you slide the books out and pop that in. 
we want to start thinking about filling in these edges with a surface that we can add color to. Think of it as something that really does travel around the entire surface of the lantern, not just something that is a, a flat image and then this becomes an afterthought. We want to make sure that all of these surfaces where we're going to be laying our cheesecloth are nice and strong. So there may be spots like little detail areas in here where you want to use your tape. Stretch out an area that's just a little bit wider than your lantern. And if there's a spot that you think might be difficult, like this little insert here under our speaker, you can build yourself little bridges. They're not going to show up in the final lantern, and they do really help to support the cheesecloth when we get to that phase. So I just lay that across. Now that's a nice little firm area. If there are any other areas that I want to just give special attention to, the tail end of this little flag. And that's going to be a little tricky to do with cheesecloth. So I'm going to give myself a little bridge here. Tug that in a little bit. And now that's a nice stable place. So you don't have to embalm your lantern in tape. Just a few spots where the cheesecloth might need a little extra support. So all of your kits came with two yards of folded cheesecloth. So the first thing we want to do is stretch it all the way out. And we want sections of this cheesecloth to be the width of the lantern plus a few inches. So we'll have a little overlap on this side, cross the gap, and then a little overlap on that side. And we're going to just cut that off. Unfold it once, unfold it twice, drape right over the lantern. So now we're going to set these aside for a moment. They're ready to go. We're going to mix our glue. So we have our trusty bucket here, and each of you has eight ounces of old-fashioned Elmer's glue all. And we're just going to pour the entire bottle into the bucket. And if we were to just glue this on with Elmer's glue straight on, it would be a sticky nightmare. So we're going to dilute it with an equal amount of water. So eight ounces of glue, eight ounces of water. Before I pour that in, I'm going to put the cap back on, and I'm going to shake it up, because I want to get all that extra glue out. Pour in the rest. And then I can just use my brush to mix it completely up so that it's, you know, perfectly blended. Take off a little bit of the excess, but we're really going to go on pretty thick with this stuff. And I'll start here, and I'm just going to draw the cheesecloth down a little bit, pre-paint that form. Makes it a little easier. I'm always kind of holding it on one end, going to pull a little bit as I do this. Any place where I can find a point of contact between the coroplast and the cheesecloth, I'm going to apply that glue. You can kind of shift it around as needed. You can tighten it as you go. You want this as tight as it can be. You don't want sagging edges. As I get into these little tight corners, this indentation here, I can kind of pull it a little bit tight and make it stretch across like that. Now I'm going to do the spacers. But I have a lot of glue. You know, you're not doing this in the way that you might use a glue stick or something like that. You're really saturating the cheesecloth. Now I can very gently paint over this little trapeze net of cheesecloth here. And you're going to lose a lot of it. It's going to drain through and all that. Don't worry too much about that. You just want to get it as soaked as you can, and especially in these little indents here. And once you've covered it, pull some of that sag out. See how you can get a nice taut form out of it even after it's wet? So I've worked my way all the way around the form, top and bottom. And if you have any excess, uh, you can always just use your pair of scissors to just trim off the excess if it's a lot. So we're going to let this dry, preferably overnight. So one thing to note also is you're going to have you know, maybe a little bit of extra glue left over. You want to cover that with some plastic and set it aside. So that's the end of the first part. Tune in to the second video to find out what to do next. We are so curious to see what you're doing. Send us documentation of your progress, video or stills. There is another video that will show you tips on how to shoot great video for that. And also, we hope that you can join us for one of our Zoom sessions. Look uh, in your email for information about that. So we hope that you will join us for those. That is such a great part of the process of building morning side lights.